had talked about where I had lost my home lab. And going forward, I want to make sure that I build a better home lab, more resilient and not able to just break down and then lose everything that I've been working toward. So in this video, I kind of want to dive a little bit more back into Proxmox and Terraform. And I want to rebuild some of the things that we had talked about last week because I already made some improvements. I had to make sure that I had networking between two virtual machines, which are eventually going to be my workers and my control plane. So in this video, I'm going to show you exactly what changes I made and how you could do it yourself. So you have two VMs and you can spin up within a few seconds just from Terraform right into your home lab. With that being said, let's get right into the video. But first, before I go ahead and show you everything on how it works, I'm going to go ahead and show you what I have going on. Uh, one thing I have to fix is the memory. I just didn't get it assigned. But now we have two virtual machines that I had spun up from this template here. So if I go into the control template or the control VM, I just have a simple username and password. And I also have SSH. So we could go ahead and cut out the SSH authorized keys file. And as you can see, we have a public key. And that's all used within my Terraform, which is not something I, that I had last week. It was not pushing an IP address correctly, and I had set it up statically at the time. Now, if we run a IP address, um, you're going to see that we have this IP address here. And if we go into the other one, you're going to see that we have uh, a different IP address. And if I go ahead and ping that P IP address, you're going to see that the two are able to communicate with one another. All right, so first, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to set up the template that you could go ahead and build from. So first, go ahead and head over to uh, cloudimages.ubuntu.com and find the release that you're going to go ahead and use. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and use this cloud image here, the Ubuntu 2504. Um, then you're going to head back into your Proxmox, go to your node and click on shell right into your home directory. As you can see here, I already did it. You're just going to go ahead and copy that link to that cloud image, go back into your shell and then just run wget. And then you can go ahead and paste in that link and then um, download that to the local home directory of your EVE. All right, from here, we're going to continue to use the CLI. In this case, we're going to use the QM command and we're going to go ahead and create another template. So QM create 9002. We're going to assign two gigs of memory to this template or this VM eventually. We're going to go ahead and create a NIC, a NIC uh, essentially the first NIC using this model here and attaching it to this bridge here. In this case, if you came over to your PVE, click the network tab, you will see that the bridge is assigned to VMBR0 and that's going to allow you to get into your um, essentially your home network. Uh, and then it's going to go ahead and just assign that SCSI to this uh, here and then go ahead and click on or click enter. I had a typo, just make sure that you uh, type in that correctly. And then as you can see, we will now get that uh, 9002 show up within our data center PVE. And then we're going to go ahead and import and attach that downloaded disk or that cloud image that we had just uh, pulled down from Ubuntu. So QM set 9002, set it to SCSI 0, local dash LVM. And then eventually you're going to go ahead and just continue to follow this and specify the path to where you have that image downloaded. Go ahead and click on enter. Next, we want to go ahead and configure the CD-ROM drive. Now this will allow you to use cloud in it. And that will allow you to essentially pass in information from Terraform to configure your VMs with infrastructure as code. So go ahead, QM set 9002. This could obviously vary depending on the template name that you had decided on. Dash dash IDE2, local dash LVM, cloud init. All right, and before you, you are gonna go ahead and create a template from this, you're gonna wanna set that boot order. This is something that I missed uh, many times now in the last two weeks of playing around with all of this. So go ahead and run QM set, specify the VM ID or the template ID that you had defined do boot right and then from that point now we can go ahead and just run qm template 9002 and then from there we should see 9002 turn over into a template and there we go so there's a few things that had changed from last week you honestly do not need to look at last week as i'm going to go ahead and walk through this entire thing here today uh, so you have a few different files here on the left so you have your main.tf uh, that's going to be kind of where you define your resources and um, the various attributes that go attached to those resources. You have some outputs So anything uh, at the end of once it's deployed, you could get some things deployed to your terminal. You have providers. This is essentially what you use in order to interact with Proxmox. Uh, in this case, this is the version that I'm using here. And then as you can see down here at the bottom, which I have blurred out, that's going to have your API URL, um, which is going to be your Proxmox endpoint. You have your API token ID and you have your API token secret all of that could be found actually in the previous week uh, where we kind of talk about how to set all that up. Last week, we had used the terraform.tfvars. I'm not sure if I used that in that video, but this is something that I was using after that, uh, and it did work, but we have a new way forward, and this is no longer relevant. Variables, this is still relevant. So in here, anything that you see under main, 
uh, with a variable uh, that will kind of be pulled from this variables.tf. So in this case, as you can see, we have a control VM name, and that is assigned to this name here. Uh, same thing for the worker, so on and so forth. It is pretty straightforward. Uh, I will have this also in the description below. So you go ahead and use the same deployment. One thing to point out is this is going to be the one thing that we need to change for this video or for anything that you go ahead and deploy yourself. So in this case, it's going to go ahead and pull from that template. Uh, so as you can see here, it's going to clone from that template that we assigned as a variable. So if we go back to here, the template variable is assigned to VM 9002. That's going to go ahead and clone that template and then it's going to create a VM from that template. Uh, pretty straightforward, everything else. You have your cores, memory, disk size, boot disk, bridge, etc. The, the other thing that I want to point out inside of the main.tf, as you can see, we have the control01 resource and I have the worker01 resource. Now, this may change down the road as I'm still kind of testing out exactly what I'm going to be doing, but I think I am on the right path. Um, but since I have two resources, one thing that I want to point out within those resources is down here at the bottom. Um, a lot of this you can read through. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, like the, here's the CD-ROM for the cloud in it. Here's the disk drive. Uh, you got your boot drive, CPU. All of this is pretty straightforward. The one thing that is new this week, um, aside from this IP config, setting that to DHCP. The other thing here is we are setting up a pretty much a snippet. Um, a CI custom that we're going to assign and build out in our deployment. Uh, and that's going to be using this YAML file here. And I'll talk about exactly how we got that and where that comes from. But that same thing will be used down here for now, although it will vary in the future or it will be different in the future as I will be installing different tools on the different VMs um, or base dependencies in that case. Because we're going to go ahead and use Ansible, which is something that we're also going to talk about in this video. That's going to go ahead and provision our environment. But for now, if I open up this install tools YAML, this is inside of my Git repository, but it is not something that is locally used. Terraform does not use this file. It just references this file. This will actually be on the Proxmox cluster itself. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. So here, as you can see, we define a username. Now I'm using, I'm logging in with this user. I'm going to assign it these permissions, assign it to this group, this shell. Here's the password. And the, one of the most important parts here is this public key here. So I had set up a private, you know, public key player before doing all of this. So now once I put this in here, I could get right into this VM, even without this username and password, but all of that is for testing. So I can get in um, regardless if the SSH key was there or not. The next thing that is important is the Git for these packages. It goes, it goes ahead and it installs Git and Python 3 dash pip. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and run some commands. We're going to install pip x. And then using the user, uh, which is the user that we had just defined, we're going to go ahead and install uh, Ansible. And this is the full Ansible. And that's going to install it to the user. Otherwise, if you don't, do not specify, it will go into root and it will not be in your path. And then um, one thing that we're going to be working on in, a, in the next week's video is going to get a way to pull down our GitLab. Um, but that is not something that we need to worry about today. All right, so like I said, this is how you, you are going to get that YAML file, the install-tools YAML file onto your Proxmox cluster. Um, so what I did, and there's a number of ways of doing this, obviously, if you just, um, you know, built the file out, you could use SCP, or you could go, actually go into the console itself, the UI, and then uh, edit a file that way. In my case, I'm just using, using Visual Studio Code, and I connect it to the remote host. So in this case, I connect it to my Proxmox, the 192.168.1.115, to the root user um, with the passwords that I use to get into the UI. And then I'm going to go ahead, head down to um, var, lib, vz, snippets, and then I'm going to go ahead and place that file right in there. So now that that file is referenced in our main.tf uh, right here, that's going to go ahead and build that out once we deploy. Um, this Terraform file. So first, we're going to simply just do a Terraform val validate. That should validate that our configuration is valid. Once that is correct, you could obviously do a Terraform plan. 
or you just go ahead and apply it especially you know we're just we already know this is going to work at least in my case uh, so we'll go ahead and apply it it'll give us the resources that it's going to deploy uh, in this case you're going to see that we have the worker 01 and then if we scroll up it'll have the control 01 and everything that is inside of it and then all we're going to do is just enter a value of yes and we'll simply let that deploy all right and as you can see the control and the worker has now deployed I'm logged in on the control in the console. And what we're going to do real quick is just grab that IP address just to show you that the SSH works. All right. And as you can see, we were able to log in from SSH to the IP address that we had just talked about. And if I just go ahead and clear my console and I run Ansible, this will show you that the Ansible package is now installed as well, all from that snippets example that we had talked about earlier. Now, the, that, the reason why that is important to me is because I'm trying to find a way to automate as much as I could as far as the infrastructure goes. Now, going forward, my plan is to go ahead and build out some playbooks. Um, and then those playbooks will obviously all be in GitLab. And then I will pull down those playbooks along with uh, having Ansible installed. So as soon as the, this environment ever gets broken down, um, and we're going to do many tests, but once this gets broken down, I go ahead and spin a new one up. And I will have... Um, the base dependencies that I need, I will have the GitLab repository with all my Ansible playbooks, my Terraform, and everything else all right into um, being automatically deployed. Now, a lot of that stuff you could, you know, install from the snippets that we had just talked about, but that is not as powerful as Ansible. Obviously, we could do some base dependencies and tools and stuff like that. From that point forward is when we're going to start talking about Ansible and um, provisioning our environment. So in next week's video, that's kind of where we're going to go into that. We're going to go ahead and start setting up Ansible. And then eventually we're going to start uh, working out the Kubernetes piece and just kind of getting a basic... Um, some basic workloads spun up some applications probably maybe starting with like coder or something like that something that we could find uh useful in our environment and then we're gonna before we start diving into more applications and deploying more and more we're gonna make sure that we have our backups and everything um ironed out so we don't have to go through this all over again in the future and one thing that i will mention is that all of this will be inside of my GitLab, um and that is one thing that i'm actively doing right now to make sure that i'm you know having everything and um anytime that i make good changes i Go ahead and I commit it um, and i'm also taking good notes and documentation which i will also talk about in a future video but that's going to close out today's video i hope you were able to take something away in this video we talked about diving more into the terraform and proxmox and how to spin up a working vm or a pair of vms that are allowed to now communicate with one another and we had used a snippet allowing us to pretty much get some base dependencies and tools installed along with a user and a ssh key pair that's it for today and as always never stop learning